only Panasonic super flat and black picture tube can promise such brilliantly clear images. From the surface, Japan looks like the most technologically advanced country in the world. It was one of the pioneers of robotics, artificial intelligence, and electronics technology, work that has been greatly influenced by its former occupation with the military. As a result, Japan has developed robots that can be used in agriculture, construction, and even in providing help to commuters during rush hours. The famous Japanese toilets are known for their profusion of lights and features, which include functions like heating the seat, monitoring your blood pressure, weight, or urine, or just thoroughly cleaning the bowl. Japanese people also love vending machines. They are an important part of Japanese culture. The country has more than 5.5 million in total, making it the country with the greatest ratio of 1 to 23 citizens worldwide. Vending machines that sell goods like apples, bananas, burgers, rice, eggs, and natto are common and nearly always outside, which makes them stick out to anybody visiting Japan. Many people continue to believe that Japan is a highly developed country with cutting-edge technology. However, many are ignorant of how significantly Japan's tech industry has lost competitiveness. Not that long ago, if you walked into someone's house you could find Japanese electronics brands like Sony, Sharp, JVC, Toshiba, Fujitsu, NEC, Panasonic, and Pioneer among others. They produced almost all consumer gadgets, including microwaves, digital music players, and televisions. They appeared to be moving too quickly to be stopped. People flocked to them because their items frequently had higher price tags to represent their perceived superiority. The once dominant Japanese consumer electronics companies are now essentially shadows of their former selves, many of which are struggling to make a profit. For businesses that once dominated the consumer electronics industry, this collapse represents a significant shift. It also basically signals the end of a time when these Japanese enterprises believed they could compete in a wide range of industries. Ironically, Samsung Electronics of South Korea, which was a scruffy low-cost competitor in the industry a decade ago, has adopted that make-everything strategy and has outperformed its Japanese rivals in terms of performance. You hate to see your old TV. It's time for Samsung. How did the once-dominant Japanese big tech slump so low? And how did the likes of Sony and Sharp lose their way? Do they have a chance to make a comeback in this decade? In this video, we will tell you why Japan's tech industry has seen the most unprecedented decline in history. Welcome to another project. The 1970s and 1980s were Japan's glory years, but that's after a miraculous recovery. The majority of Japan's industry collapsed after World War II as a result of the conflict. When the war ended, the majority of nations were still dealing with its aftermath, with certain nations, like Japan, experiencing a severe decline in economic output. It was a country that had been decimated, demoralized, and destroyed that had nearly a million American soldiers occupying it up until 1952. Tokyo and, of course, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were among the main cities that were reduced to ashes. Thirty years later, the Japanese economy ranked second in the world, behind only the United States. It expanded more than 2.5 times faster than the U.S. economy between 1950 and 1973 and had a rate that was twice that of Western Europe. Its size doubled during the 1960s in just seven years. Japan underwent a miraculous transformation from poverty to opulence in little more than a decade. It became one of East Asia's most developed nations. The highly educated and disciplined workforce that was produced by the Japanese educational system contributed to the country's economic expansion. Japan had one of the highest rates of literacy, and it still does today. The Japanese Ministry of International Trade and Industry established a partnership between the public and private sectors to increase industry productivity and generate economic gains. It was given control over imports of technology and subsequently on overall imports into Japan. The industrial sector was also stimulated by the importation of new inexpensive technology. The majority of the economic initiatives that contributed to Japan's explosive expansion during the period of the economic miracle are attributed to the ministry. But perhaps the ripple effect of this is the boom it caused in Japan's tech industry, which was felt globally. Innovation supported by the state was so successful because it decreased uncertainty. 
At one point, speed and technology were on the side of many Japanese companies, such as automotive reliability and value, personal audio, consumer electronics, computing, photography, and anime. Japan gained a significant impact on the world. In many respects, it still is. The personal audio revolution started with Sony's Walkman, which many would argue helped pave the way for Apple's current success. Gaming became a popular pastime activity thanks to the Sony PlayStation and Nintendo systems. The beige world of PCs gained beauty and grace thanks to Sony's Veo devices. The world's television viewing habits were transformed by Panasonic, Sony, Hitachi, and Sharp. These Japanese businesses altered how society functions. Most of these formerly unbeatable businesses are now struggling to remain afloat in turbulent waters. These famous brands used to control the consumer's minds, hearts, and disposable income. The consumer share of wallet was under their control because they were top of mind. Now they find it difficult to create or sell the goods that people think they must have. Where did they miss the mark and does Japanese tech seem to be left miles behind by its competitors? Japan was left behind as the world's attention switched away from hardware and toward software. Its tech industry mostly lags behind due to a lack of attention and appreciation for new developments in software. It makes sense from a historical perspective how Japan came to have this mentality. Hardware was responsible for rescuing them from the rubble of World War II and propelling Japan's economy to its peak in the 1980s and 1990s, just before the bubble went bust. In the past, hardware was created before software. In order to remain competitive in today's market, these two need to be developed together. As the saying goes, if you aren't willing to adapt, you won't advance and will fall behind. The decision-making process, educational system, and investments proved that software was not valued. Even in Japanese IT firms, software engineers have little prestige. They are just regarded as being less valuable or prestigious than other hardware engineers, such as electrical engineers. In 2006, the former president of Sony explained this phenomenon in an interview saying, We did not bring software engineers into product development at the beginning. The hardware engineers would begin the product and then software would come in after the fact. And that's because in a company that has jobs for life, the older people are at the top and the younger software engineers are at the bottom, pushing up. So there is a kind of a generation gap. Back in the 1970s and 1980s, when hardware capabilities were essential to a company's success, hardware engineers were the ones who excelled. Due to the hierarchical architecture of Japanese businesses, when software began to become more important, the voices of software engineers were ignored. The companies were further pressured at the same time period by external factors including the rising value of the Japanese yen, which made goods exported from Japan more expensive abroad and reduced margins at home. The 1990s in Japan were referred to as a lost decade because they were a time of economic stagnation that led to one of the longest-lasting economic crises in recorded history. Japan's GDP growth was consistently slow up until the world financial crisis and the Great Recession, averaging just 0.5% annually. As a result, the years from 1991 to 2010 are often referred to as the lost score or the lost 20 years. As businesses moved their production to low-cost nations like China, which was determined to become the world's manufacturing capital, the entire manufacturing paradigm changed as well. Japanese manufacturers' profit margins were severely impacted by this. Compare an Apple store with a Sony store. Which of the two stores do you believe you will leave with new goods in hand, and why would you enter either one? because they saw that the age of products was passing and that the future will be shaped by integrated customer experiences across an entire product ecosystem, Apple and firms like it opened the door to disruption. A MacBook can sync with an iPad, which can sync with iTunes, which can sync with iPhones, iPods, and Apple TVs in an Apple ecosystem. Software is used to create an integrated experience for everything, something that its Japanese counterparts utterly overlooked. The sophisticated electrical devices that these Japanese companies produce such as radios, cassette players, refrigerators, washing machines help them build their empire, and of course, color televisions which experienced fleeting commercial success. But why did Japan lose its once vibrant television industry? Before we continue please consider liking and subscribing below if you're enjoying the video. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. The current deterioration of the Japanese television industry serves as the best example of their demise. 
When big tube TVs were the norm, Sony, Sharp, and a multitude of other Japanese businesses dominated the industry. The Sony Trinitron enjoyed a stellar reputation as the television to own. Sony Trinitron. Picture perfect. Few of them did particularly well with the switch to flat panel televisions. While many of them saw profits right off the bat, as competition grew and margins tightened, many of the businesses started to feel the pressure. A number of weaker competitors, including JVC, Hitachi, Fujitsu, Toshiba, NEC, and Pioneer, left the market. They were replaced by businesses like LG and Samsung. Particularly Samsung concentrated on producing flat panel TVs of a higher caliber, cramming them with more features, and charging competitive prices, slowly increasing its market share. In terms of features and design, it has long eclipsed its Japanese competitors. It currently holds the top spot in the television industry and has a gold standard brand. Another issue is the wide variety of products these businesses offered, many of which are now hardly even in existence. Sony is currently in the unfortunate situation of competing with tech giants Apple and Samsung for a small portion of the market. When everything is streamed, do people still purchase digital music players, DVD players, or Blu-ray players? On mobile, the Japanese also missed the boat. Sharp and Panasonic were unable to compete globally because they were too exclusive and devoted to their domestic market. Because of its joint venture with Ericsson, which had considerable success with entry-level phones, Sony was limited. But when Apple introduced the iPhone a few years ago, these businesses rapidly realized they couldn't compete. The Japanese businesses lagged behind as Samsung and HDC seized the lead after the introduction of Google and Android, which came a little later. With Xperia, its flagship phone, Sony has a chance at a modest recovery. This phone is well-remembered for being used by James Bond in the coincidentally Sony-produced movie Skyfall. Although Sharp sells certain phones on the American market, very few people, if any, have ever heard of them. With its Aluka brand of smartphones, Panasonic had plans to go outside of Japan, but the company currently lacks the clout or finances to accomplish that. So, what's the future of Japanese tech? Despite the fact that everyone has provided a roadmap for returning to profitability, the pressure will actually increase. China and the developing nations are increasingly competing also with the United States and Korea. However, experts concur that the fourth industrial revolution, which is characterized by highly intelligent robots that threaten to replace humans at their jobs, is now significantly different from the previous one and far more appropriate for Japan's strengths. The last wave of innovation was focused on computing, software, and the internet, but the upcoming one is expected to be far more about using technology to change the world. Things like the industrial internet, using technologies in manufacturing, the internet of things, smart cities, connected vehicles, robotics, and autonomous drones are all areas where the Japanese have many more core strengths in mechanical and electrical engineering. Now they're competing on a field that's a little more friendly to them, whereas the one in the previous 30 years was more friendly to the United States. Japan can potentially catch up to the United States and China in the development of quantum computing, a field in which Europe is far behind. Even Japan's biggest drawback, its aging population, may ultimately be advantageous. In the years to come, Japan will continue to make a variety of advancements in areas related to aging, longevity, and healthcare. But the real question is, do you think Japanese big tech can make a comeback to its former glory? Let us know in the comments below, we are always lurking at your interesting takes. You can click here to know more about South Korea's baby shortage, and here to learn more about how Taiwan secretly runs the world. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.